This tutorial presents data extraction from Jazz Requirements Manager. The first step consists of adding the corresponding data source schema. Select the rest schema type and introduce the schema location and schema name. Introduce your Jazz Rational Requirements Composer username and password. Data source schemas will appear on the left side of the template and will have a tree structure. We will use a table element to display the requirements attributes. Select the table element in the palette view and click in the desired location in the template content editor. Add a text element in each row cell. Double click the text element to modify the text content. Add the attributes names in each cell. The attributes extracted for each requirement are, ID, name, type and last modified date. Select a container and drop it inside the created table. Use drag and drop to add the second row inside the container. Set the data source artifact query to the container. Drag the desired query from the data source schema's view and drop it on the container. Set the data source artifact object type query to the second row. We do this in order to be able to extract the element type. An element can be a requirement or a collection of requirements. Insert a text element into the first cell. Expand the artifact element from the data source schema. Drag the identifier attribute into the text box. Select choose as value context. Drag the title element into the second cell. Select Choose as value context. Notice that the text field is inserted automatically.
insert a text element into the third cell. Drag the object type element into the text box. Insert a text element into the last cell. Drag the artifact collaboration element into the cell element. Then drag the modified value into the text box. This represents the last time the requirement was modified. After setting all the data queries, we will start table formatting. Select the table. Go to Properties panel and select Formatting and then Specific. Set the table auto fit value to auto fit to window. Select the first row. This will be the table header. In the Properties panel select Specific and set RAR repeated page beginning value to True. Set the width of the first cell from the second row to 30. Set the alignment to center for each cell of the second row. Select the style for the header row. Right click on the cell, select style and header cell. You can also customize your own style. Set the cell background color for the first row. Select the Save button to save the template. Select the Launcher perspective to be able to configure the data sources. Select the data source, open contextual menu and configure data source.
Insert the data source URL by replacing with your own server name and port and your CLM username and password. Select the Run button to start template generation. The list of errors and warnings will be displayed during template generation. Click on one of the template formats to open the document. The desired output document is a table containing information about requirements from Jazz Rational Requirements Composer. In the next step we will display the related requirements for each element of type collection. The requirement names will be displayed under the collection name. In order to do this we need to modify the second cell. Insert a container element inside the cell. Drag the traceability links element into the container. The container will iterate all the requirements linked to the collection. Insert a list element inside the container and add a text element to the list detail. Double click the text element and select script expression. Display the links identifier followed by name. We want to display the related links of an element only if the element is of type collection. In order to do this, we will add a condition to the container element. Select the container, right click, data and edit condition. The script expression window will open. The condition is true only if the element object type value contains the substring collection. We use the match function to check if the substring collection is found within the object type string.
save the template and generate the document again. You can see that the requirements that belong to the user interface collection are displayed under the collection name.